If you love growing amazing vegetables, fruits, and flowers, then you are going to love this. Hi guys, I'm Chantel and today we are going to talk about how to make your DIY compost bin. Animal manure is a great product to fertilize our soil with. It is full of nitrogen and other um, amazing things for our vegetables and flowers and fruit trees and all that stuff. However, due to a product called Grazon, animal manure can be deadly to your garden. And here's why. Grazon is a very persistent herbicide that has been uh, sprayed uh, in the past several years uh, in pastures in, um, for grazing animals and um, to kill uh, persistent herbs and the pesticide, it's the herbicide itself is very persistent and it can uh, go through the digestive tract of the animal and then be transferred into uh, into the manure and it stays in the manure it does not go away and when you put it on your garden even if the manure has been sitting for six months and has been um, decomposing and cooling off and all that it is going to that herbicide is going to kill your garden so as I was doing my research on uh, finding a gr great source for animal manure in our local area I came across articles about the subject and many gardeners that had have had put animal manure on their gardens just to uh, find out that soon after their garden was destroyed because of this herbicide that has stayed in these animal manures and Although I love animal manure and uh, I think it is a great product to fertilize our soil with, this year we have decided to go with an organic compost which is also great for fertilizing your garden. But here are my issues with purchasing compost. Uh, first, you don't know what's in the compost. You don't know if they sprayed the plants also with uh, herbicides uh, or if they uh, Put pesticides or anything like that on the plants that they have put in the compost and to decompose you don't know where it's coming from what's in it and all these things and just for peace of mind I think making your own compost is great for uh, being one self-sufficient and two making sure your garden is going to have um, amazing success and unless you have your own animals that you can get your manure from uh, then uh, the only option would be to is to make your own compost uh, so this right here is a temporary solution for us to make our own compost this is not a permanent structure but this year we just decided to put it right here uh, because are these what are these bugs our bugs roaming all around it. <laughs> this year we decided to put it right here just because we have animals that come and dig in our compost pile and right now my uh, husband has built an electric fence that goes all around uh, our vegetable garden uh, that we have also expanded and are expanding and I will show you in a few minutes how it's uh, um, looking but for now uh, we're talking about the compost so <laughs> let me show you what we are using and how you can do that yourself just for a very minute price uh, well although these days with inflation it's probably gonna cost you just a little bit more <laughs> but we have had these things on hand uh, sitting in our barn and now we got to use them for a great purpose so let me show you what we're, what we're using so right here I have these these are some uh, staking uh, some steaks for tomato steaks that you would just uh, purchase to stake your tomatoes and uh, this is what we put to make the frame uh, all around we have one two three four five of them and we just created kind of a circular shape uh, just uh, so that it's big enough for me to put a lot of compost in here and to till it and also uh, we put a chicken wire fence um, mesh all around this and we just folded it um, over the edges the edging stakes like this one over here and that one then we folded the top over uh, let me give you a close-up so you can see right here we just folded the top over like that just to keep it in place and we did that all around around all the uh, five stakes over here and we did the same thing on the side as well um, I went around in uh, the edges and I just kind of um, you have these uh, ends the sharp ends on the 
mesh that would be sticking out and I just kind of uh, twisted them on the mesh itself on the chicken wire mesh uh, so that it would be a little bit more secure here's what else you can do uh, you can also come along with a stapler and staple the chicken wire mesh over these stakes uh, just to give it a little bit more support if you want to now we also put some cardboard at the bottom to block any grass from coming up what you could do if you didn't want to put any cardboard is to uh, just take the grass out um, using an edger or something like that and then put the compost on top but for me I just wanted something that's quick and easy I didn't want to have I don't have time to come and dig out the grass I just want something that's simple and quick because we have a lot of projects going on so uh, I just put down the cardboard and the cardboard is going to do its job and kill the grass and then I can put the I am putting the compost on top and then we are going to be tilling it and watering it now you could do um, three of these bins if you want to you could have one where you put the compost in uh, and uh, let it decompose and then once it's decomposed it would be ready to use and the other one would be one that's in the process and one that's just you're filling up but this is my first compost bin right now and then again it's temporary eventually I would probably be building one that's nicer three of them in the back over here I might use pallets uh, those are free uh, but you want if you are using pallets or wood you want to make sure it's not pressure treated because it cre it contains harm harmful chemicals and the, those harmful chemicals can leach into the compost and possibly poison us uh, so this is a very simple and quick way to create your own compost bin it, ha it really doesn't need any tools except maybe if you want to cut the wire mesh you might need some uh, metal shears to cut the mesh um, and it doesn't have to be any anything um, of high capacity just use anything of low capacity because the chicken wire mesh is not um, a thick gauge when creating compost, it doesn't have to be this complicated process. Just toss out in there any of your remaining vegetables that you just want to pull out from the garden as long as they don't have any insects on them, like aphids or squash bugs because those can possibly infest your compost pile. Um, just make sure it is not insect uh, ridden, basically, or mealy bugs or anything like that. You want to put organic stuff there, of course. You could put your grass clippings as long as they don't don't have uh, weed seeds in them and you could uh, or um, if you don't have any creeping Charlie <laughs> in your grass and if, you can also put any of your kitchen scraps you can have your compost decompose in either six weeks or six months that's all up to you so in compost usually you want to have some brown material like um, fallen leaves from the trees and some green material like the grass for example that contains nitrogen so you want carbon and nitrogen to work both together and your kitchen scraps are going to add a lot of other ingredients and you can add coffee grounds also if you add eggshells in there I always add eggshells and sometimes if an egg breaks I'll just put it in there as well you're gonna have in there some uh, sulfur and calcium and all these things now eggs do take a lot longer to decompose just keep that in mind you can also bake them bake the shells and grind them up and then throw them into your compost pile if you want it to decompose a lot faster uh, and this is going to add that calcium that a lot of the plants are going to need like tomatoes for example and squash uh, and it if your soil uh, lacks those nutrients it is going to provide those nutrients for your plants so there's a lot that goes on to compost I could talk for days about this uh, but you don't want to stress out on what are you gonna put in it and am I putting the right amount of this and the right amount of that uh, just toss whatever you have in there that can be composted and put it in in your compost pile and you're good to go um, as long as you add in the greens and the, the, the browns the carbon and the nitrogen you're good and your kitchen scraps bananas are great because uh, they contain potassium and other stuff in there all that again like I said I could talk for days about compost uh, so uh, to make the process quick of course you always want to provide moisture for your compost so you want to 
if it's too dry out you want to water it and also if it's too wet you want to cover it if you if your area is constantly rainy all the time because um, it is going to cool the compost down and it is going to leach out a lot of nutrients as well and you want to make sure your compost gets to heat if you want to kill the uh, the seeds in there so the best way to get a hot compost pile is by tilling it constantly and pro providing that air in there aerating it and tilling it and it's uh, and providing moisture in there uh, and making sure it doesn't dry out uh, so um, if you come here every day and you till it up and check on it if it's dry You can also get one of those uh, thermometers specially designed for compost just to, because it's long and for the garden You know, it's not like anything special. It's just it is a little special <laughs> I'm thinking actually of getting myself one of these because it's gonna help me out just to make sure if I had a big compost pile and um, I want to kill the wheat seeds that would be great now if you want the compost to decompose on its own for six months or maybe a little bit longer you could just layer it up with layers of brown and nitrogen and let it sit uh, for the whole winter and by the next summer it should be ready for you to use but basically this is how you make a compost bin for yourself a it could be temporary if you want uh, or it could be permanent whatever you want um, for me this is for now temporary because honestly it's kind of ugly <laughs> um, but it serves its purpose for now so let me just give you a quick tour, tour of what we are doing over here in our garden uh, just give you an update of what's happening and um, if you want to stay updated on, on, on new and exciting things that are happening over here on our homestead and if you want freebies make sure to sign up to our email list this is where the compost pile that we were talking about and right behind it we created three rows in the back row we're gonna and back two rows we're gonna have uh, some grapevines and hardy kiwis going in and in this front row it's gonna be vegetables and we are also going to be planting vegetables and strawberries and all that and under the vines as well uh, you can see over here I was putting in a bed and then I changed my mind and I will show you in a second where that bed ended up but uh, we will my husband is right now building some beds that are gonna be going over here and that is super exciting and then on this side over here behind our well you can see two new raised beds that in the last video I told you guys that these are gonna have the grapevines in them we ended up putting them on this side over here behind the well uh, because we changed the changed the configuration over here in this area and then uh, we are going to be putting some trellises you will you see them over there you'll see that in a different video and we put out or my husband put out an electric fence all around our vegetable garden and the fruit trees i hope you guys are not getting dizzy i hope i'm not going super fast for you but you can see it it's everywhere so if I get closer to it let me just give you a close-up it is not on right now but these are just some plastic posts uh, with uh, hooks on the other side <laughs> and these are some electrical wires that run along the post there are five of them and they are connected to our to a solar system that's connected to our apiary as well and uh, let me show you how we oh and we have two gates let me just show you what we do to open and close those gates it's pretty simple I don't know much about these my husband knows better about them probably one day he can do a video for us about this but I think there's a metal piece that goes from this side to this side and these just hook on to the electrical wire on the post over here uh, and they are connected on this side to the electrical wire as well so the circuit continues from here to here and then gets connected to the electrical wire on the opposite side let me give you a wide view so you can see that's our gate over here 
there we go simple <laughs> these go on all five posts down here and they get connected to all of these and then when we want to open the gate we just simply unhook it and open it and you can see how these are all lined up this way so that we want to make sure that they don't get tangled so I start from the top and then I put the top one on this side and the second one on that side and so on and so forth just to make sure that these don't get tangled because if they do that's gonna be a tangly mess <laughs> and this right here is the solar system that gets that is the that the wires are connected to and we just simply turn it on and off from this button over here and you can see they're connected to the fence along with this one because the fence is already connected to our solar sy solar system solar electrical electrical powering solar system i don't know what to call it it's a solar system <laughs> my husband laughed at me for saying it's a solar system it's not our solar system you know the one we live on but it is a solar system what do you call it <laughs> so I just want to say a quick thank you for you guys for hanging out with me over here today and showing and uh, learning how to make your own compost pile a uh, compost bin I should say <laughs> and I will be leaving a link over here for uh, how to prepare your garden for spring uh, stay tuned for the next video because we have some exciting things coming up and I'll see you again next time